Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Sam with Rococo and I am very excited to bring you all a fresh new official blender retargeting workflow that is easy, useful, and hits all the boxes. So because I'm not a full-time Blender user, we turned to the pros and worked with CG Dive on YouTube to put together this workflow. It's just a 30 minute video, but it goes into way more detail on how to handle different situations and how to use Auto Rig Pro, which is the tool that we're gonna be using. Now, the other thing I have to mention before we get started is that we are using a paid plugin for this tutorial. And there's a couple reasons I feel okay doing that. One, it's an amazing creator. They're great, they've been around forever. It is paid, but the reason that I am still recommending this and that we are still recommending this, even for Blender, which is a free program, is that mocap can be difficult for retargeting. And it's rare that you have such a full feature set in any sort of tool that helps you fix so many of these problems. The other thing is Blender gets updated constantly and our plugin, we have a plugin for Blender, we can't keep up with the changes and having to update the plugin all the time. This plugin is always up to date. It will always be compatible. It's just great. And I'll put a link to a free workflow down below if you can't afford this, which is totally understandable, but this is worth it and this is the best workflow. So with that being said, let's get into it. And again, please go check out the full workflow video on CG Dive's channel if you want to get clarity or have any questions because he covers it all. Okay, let's do it. So the first thing that we'll need to do is grab our Rococo motion capture. So here I just have a fighting idol that I did. We're actually giving away this whole pack of idols for free um, at Rococo.com. I'll put a link down below. But the first thing I do whenever I'm using Rococo is I want to spend 30 seconds and make sure I do my foot contact cleanup in my timeline in Rococo Studio. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And now we're going to export this out to Blender. And to do that, I'm going to be using a Mixamo export preset. We don't need the facial data because this workflow is not using facial data. I'm going to set my frame rate to 24 just because that's what I work in. You don't need to. And then I will export the clip and we can jump over to Blender. So here I am in Blender 4.3 and I've already gone ahead and installed uh, two add-ons just by going to the Blender Marketplace and downloading Auto Rig Pro and also animation layers, which we'll be using later, but you can see I have Auto Rig Pro set up here. And if I go into my little toolbar, look, we've got Auto Rig Pro right there. So now we need a character. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a Mixamo character. Again, the great thing about Auto Rig Pro and about this tutorial from CG Dive is that it will work both with these Mixamo characters, but also with atypical unusual skeletons and character types. So for the purpose of this short video, I'm just using a Mixamo character, but head over to the full length tutorial if you want to know how to use more complicated rigs. So now I can go and grab my character. So I'm gonna to go to File, Import, FBX, and I've got my character right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and uncheck animation because I don't want any animation coming in on my Mixamo character. And I'm going to check automatic bone orientation. This is a great tip from CG Dive. Uh, this, use this if you are not going to an external application after Blender. For example, if you wanted to bring this character after you retarget into Unreal Engine, I might not check this because this will basically reformat the bones for Blender but it won't work well if you would then leave Blender with that character after having reformatted the bones, if that makes sense. In this case, again, I'm sticking in Blender, so I like to have all my bones looking normal, so I click this and I hit import. And there we go, we have our character. And the first thing I'm gonna do right off the bat is just add a rig to this character. And this is where Auto Rig Pro really starts to shine. So I'm just going to select my character here and I will go over to Quick Rig. I will go to Import Mixamo, Clear Current Limbs, and look at that. Everything just works via the preset. And there are presets for Unreal Engine and lots of other things. For Mixamo, this is so easy. Look, Daz, Vroid, lots of different things. So these are really cool. You can also go in and do this manually. Um, but in this case, it's a Mixamo character, so I don't need to. I will then just hit Quick Rig. I am going to be using FK arms and IK legs. We'll get into that later, why? And I'm just gonna hit okay. 
And just like that, I've got my rig all set up. I've got IK legs, look at this, how easy. And I've got FK or forward kinematic arms. So we can switch between IK and FK later, which is also really cool. But for now, we are going to go ahead and import our motion capture. So I'll go to file, import, FBX. I'll select my mocap, this fighting idol. And I do want the animation this time, obviously, and automatic bone orientations and import FBX. And now the first thing I'm going to do is just go up, make sure that my frame rate is set to 24 FPS. I'm going to make my timeline out point about 1300 frames. It looks like our last frame is about 1260. So if we hit play, we've got our Rococo motion capture in our scene looking good. So how do we get this mocap onto this character? So the thing that we're gonna do is I am going to go up to the remap functionality up here. I will select my motion capture first, add it into the source, then I will select my rig of my character, rig right here, put that in the target. I'm going to hit auto scale. So that scales down, if you just saw that, my motion capture to fit my character better, which is gonna help with our retarget. Now what's great about Auto Rig Pro is again, we have all these presets for known bone types like Mixamo or Unreal Engine or Daz. So if I hit build bone list, you can see by default, it's gonna fill in a lot of this for us. Now we can go ahead and do this manually, but we don't really need to because we have these mapping presets again. And when I'm using a Mixamo character for my end character where my motion capture is going, I'm going to select Mixamo FK arms, IK legs. I'm actually gonna to want to do editing with IK arms later, but we can easily switch from FK arms and using FK arms for our retargeting gives us a better retargeting result from the motion capture. So I'm gonna select FK arms, IK legs, clear current bones list, yep. It was already selected on that preset so it did it automatically. I'm gonna go and select hips and just make sure it's set as root. Everything looks good. So at this point we can just hit retarget and it would retarget and it would bake all of our animation to our character. But what's really cool again about Auto Rig Pro is if instead we go to this gear and we hit bind only, this is going to give us a test example of the retarget. So it's not going to copy all the keyframes over from our, our mocap to our character yet. It's gonna show us what things look like. And right off the bat, you can see that there are a couple errors with the way our motion capture is coming through. And this is very typical. And the reason that this happens if we hit unbind is because you can see the starting positions of our motion capture and our character are different. And when they're different, they're going to be offset when we transfer the animation. So in order to fix this, I'm going to go to bind only again, and then I will go to redefine rest pose, leave these settings and hit okay. And at this point we could go in and we could manually, you know, change the position of our motion capture skeleton to fit our character. We don't need to though, because we can just go to copy bones rotation. So for all the bones I want to fix, which in this case are all of the arm bones, of my motion capture and then all of the leg bones of my motion capture. I'm gonna select all of those, copy selected bones rotation, and it made them copy the form of my character. And that's gonna give us a much better mocap retarget. This is incredible that you can do this using the system and it's so easy. Now I can hit apply and everything is done. I'm still bound. So if I hit play, sometimes you have to unbind and bind again to see the result. And now, of course, you can see that, look at how it fixed those thumbs. Look at how it fixed so many of those issues that were still there. There are still things we might wanna fix, but the glaring issues have been taken care of. And that is really cool right off the bat. So at this point, I can unbind and I will retarget. And this is going to bake I'm going to do 12, 60 frames and I'm going to check fake user. Uh, this is just something you need to do. So I check fake user and hit OK. And basically my retarget is now going to be done. Oh, and if I even go in and I delete my mocap, I delete my armature and all this extra stuff that uh, we don't need. That was part of my 
and motion capture here, hit play, and we have this great retarget. Turn on some textures. Ooh, we're looking good. So that was retargeting, very simple to do. And again, for other types of characters, I recommend going to the full tutorial because it goes into all of this in more detail and it's also very clear. Now, the other thing that tutorial goes through is how to handle editing your motion capture. And that's because of the differences between an actor's body and a character's body. So the mocap performer versus the character are usually different proportions. And when that happens, you get issues with clipping, or hands not being where they should. And these are all things that you typically need to go in and fix doing a little mocap editing. Now again, thankfully, AutoRig Pro does mocap editing super well, and it makes it really easy to do very effective, efficient mocap editing. So let's say we wanted to edit some of these uh, arms to be a little bit better. So right now, if we go into select our character and we go into pose mode, we are, we have an FK system for the arms. And instead I want an IK system, which means I would be able to move this wrist where I wanted it to be. And the rest of the arms would follow the position of the wrist. So what I'm going to do is select these hands one at a time, these hand controllers that are currently only, you can see we can't move them in space. We can only rotate them. But if we select them and then we go to bake FK to IK, we are going to bake this entire arm into an IK arm. So what we've done then is we've gotten the best result for the motion capture retargeting using the FK system which gives you a higher fidelity mocap retarget. But then we get to use IK arms for our editing. So it's a little roundabout, but again, go watch the full tutorial if you wanna see this in more detail. But just know this is the best way to get the best results. You don't really need to do this, but I choose to because I want the best fidelity from my mocap. So the left arm is done. And by default, it adds a keyframe on here. I'm just gonna right click and clear keyframes and now what we can do is if we whoop switch it now what happens if we grab this ah <gasps> there we go we have an ik fk switch and we can swap between them as needed and that is really, really awesome. And I can do the same thing for the other hand here. So I'll select that hand, bake FK to IK and let it do its thing. When it's done, I will right click, clear keyframes and make sure I'm in IK mode. And now I am ready to do any mocap editing that I want to. So let's say that we wanted to have my character kind of scratch his chin right here. I'm going to use the animation layers uh, plugin to do this, but CG Dive goes through this using the Blender native system for doing mocap editing. I just really love the animation layers add-on. It's great, and I will turn it on right here. And then if I hit plus while having this hand selected, I can turn on my auto here. And then I can start making changes. As you can see, we have no keyframes on the timeline anymore, which means that we can make keyframe edits to our mocap using this IK system really easily. And here, let's like, oh, he like kind of rubs his jaw, you know, he, he kind of does that move. Ugh. And then I and then I bring my arm back into a punch. I'm ready to go. And of course, if we wanted to do something more dramatic, we could maybe grab the head. I can add a new layer. I can name this layer uh, right hand, add a new layer for the head. So everything is nice and organized. And let's say I want to do something more extreme here, just to show off the effect of what's happening. Look, super easy to edit 
And then beyond that, look, we can turn these layers on and off. If we don't like what we did or we want to make a change or something like that, we can delete these layers. We can keep adding on top of them. It's a great system for doing mocap editing, which is really incredible because this sort of easy editing didn't exist even a year or two years ago in most programs. Um, so this is a real advancement. So that was our full official workflow. I'm so excited that we have this just because it is reliable. It means that I can always point to a video and say pretty much any situation, any character you have, any wonkiness, any editing you need to do, this video at CG Dive is gonna solve it. And hopefully this gave you a little taste of that. And I really recommend going and checking out the full tutorial and giving our guy, uh, CG Diva, like and a follow uh, because very talented and this workflow is awesome. So we'll see you in the next Blender video and good luck out there, everyone. Thanks.